In this video, we will be taking a detailed look at single-use duodenoscopes, from its conception to reality. Despite the low reported infection rate, endoscope reprocessing lapses have resulted in heightened focus on patient safety, particularly with recent emergence of superbugs known as carbapenem-resistant Enterobacteriaceae, or CRE. Much of this enhanced scrutiny in the United States is a direct consequence of a report by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, documenting an outbreak of CRE at a hospital in suburb of Chicago. A novel CRE subtype, New Delhi Metallobe Lactamase Producing E. coli, that is associated with broad antibiotic resistance and high mortality was identified, and subsequently traced to a reprocessed duodenoscope that has complex mechanical components engineered at its tip. Several other outbreaks of multi-drug resistant organisms involving duodenoscopes have been reported in the United States, and this problem was observed not to be unique to a specific manufacturer. With growing awareness, it is now apparent that duodenoscope-related infection transmission is a global problem. Photographs taken during dismantling of the distal cap of a duodenoscope revealed a small crack in the fixed cap near the objective lens and in the ceiling of the glass covering the light guide lens. Sludge was found behind the glass that covers the light guide lens. The O-ring is a ceiling ring for the elevator wide channel and functions as a barrier between the inside of the elevator wide channel and the outside of the duodenoscope, preventing infiltration of debris in this channel. However, the elevator side, which is in direct contact with a patient, was observed to be contaminated. Although rare, microbial colonization can occur despite adequate reprocessing after any ELCP procedure. In a retrospective observational study, patients undergoing stent placement in the setting of malignant biliary obstruction were particularly at increased risk for CRE transmission. In order to minimize the risk of infection transmission, duodenoscope manufacturers and the FDA have recommended a four-stage rigorous cleaning and reprocessing measures that include wiping the external surface and irrigating the working channel in the procedure room, using brush and detergents with further manual irrigation in the reprocessing area, using a combination of high-level disinfectants and automated reprocessing, and finally rinsing the duodenoscope with star water prior to drying and storage. However, a recent meta-analysis demonstrated a 15.25% contamination rate of reprocessed duodenoscopes. While the double high-level disinfection and ethylene oxide reprocessing methods were superior to standard high-level disinfection technique, they were still inefficient and imperfect. In December 2018, the FDA announced the interim results of duodenoscope reprocessing studies conducted in real-world settings. The study indicated a reprocessing failure, and up to 3% of properly collected samples tested positive for high concern organisms such as E. coli and Pseudomonas. Consequently, the FDA recommended transitioning to duodenoscopes with innovative designs that facilitate or eliminate the need for reprocessing. When a patient is newly identified with either a clinical infection or silent carriage of a multi-drug resistant organism, the history should be reviewed to identify potential exposure via endoscopy using an instrument with an elevator in the prior several months. The individual endoscope should be sequestered for at least 48 hours until a culture for high concern organisms is negative. However, if the endoscope tests positive for multidrug resistant organism, the hospital microbiology and infection control departments must be contacted to identify all patients in whom the endoscope was used, and a report must be submitted to the FDA. The contaminated duodenoscope should undergo sequestration with cleaning and reprocessing until a repeat or series of cultures confirm the absence of high concern organisms. Public awareness about the risks of duodenoscope-related infections was heightened by a news article published in the New York Times in April 2019. In order to facilitate better cleaning of the elevator site and eliminate the risk of biofilm formation, all major manufacturers have developed a detachable cap that provides easy access to the mechanical components within the distal end of the duodenoscope. However, in a recent prospective study, it was found that while the detachable cap reduces the presence of residual organic material, 
it may not eliminate the presence of microorganisms completely. In order to eliminate the risk of infection transmission at ERCP associated with the use of reusable duodenoscopes, Boston Scientific Corporation developed Exalt-D, the world's first single-use duodenoscope. While the New York Times exalted its development, there were questions regarding reimbursement for procedures undertaken using this recent innovation. The single-use duodenoscope is packaged with two devices in a box. Once opened, the single-use duodenoscope is seen in a sterile package, and your technician will open up the packet by peeling away the outer covering. The single-use duodenoscope is 1.24 meters in length, has a working channel of 4.2 millimeters, and is 11.3 millimeters in outer working diameter. The suction button and the air water button, along with the biopsy channel cap, arrives in a sterile packet also, which will need to be opened prior to being attached to the scope. It is plugged into the dedicated Exalt processor. The suction and water bottle can be connected as with a reusable duodenoscope. The duodenoscope is now ready for use. In June 2020, within six months of the release of Exalt-D, given its public health importance in a significant development, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services approved a transitional pass-through payment that enables Medicare beneficiaries to have access to this innovative development. Following the FDA approval of the single-use duodenoscope in December 2019, the first ERCP procedure using the commercially available single-use duodenoscope was performed by Dr. Varadara Julu on January 24, 2020 at the Center for Interventional Endoscopy in Advent Health Hospital Orlando. In order to evaluate the technical functionality and safety profile of the new device, we conducted a randomized trial comparing the single-use and reusable duodenoscopes in patients undergoing ERCP. The primary outcome measure was the total number of attempts at cannulation. The secondary outcome measures were technical function of duodenoscopes and adverse events. 98 patients underwent ERCPs in this randomized trial, with 48 patients randomized to the single-use scope and 50 patients randomized to the reusable scope. While the single-use duodenoscopes were more stiff, more difficult to pass into the stomach, and had inferior image quality, image stability, and air-water button functionality compared to the reusable duodenoscope, the median number of attempts to achieve successful cannulation of the desired duct was significantly lower for the single-use cohort at 2 versus 5 cannulation attempts. This was confirmed on multivariate logistic regression analysis, which showed that only the use of the single-use scope was significantly associated with less than six attempts at successful cannulation. This case will illustrate to observations pertaining to the primary outcome of our randomized trial, which was the number of attempts at successful cannulation. This 85-year-old female with cholangiocarcinoma and obstructive jaundice underwent an ERCP for biliary stem placement. However, due to the difficult position and angle of the major papilla and its floppy nature, deep cannulation of the common bar duct was not successful using the reusable duodenoscope. Therefore, the reusable duodenoscope was changed to the single-use duodenoscope. Please note the different orientation of the major papilla when using the single-use duodenoscope, which then allowed successful cannulation of the common bile duct. However, complete occlusion of the bile duct by the mass precluded the passage of the guide wire into the intrahepatic ductal system. Subsequently, the patient underwent US-guided drainage of the common hepatic duct using a 10 mm diameter lumen posing metal stent. Therefore, in certain select circumstances, the ability to access the major papilla at a different orientation when using the single-use duodenoscope may facilitate easier glary access. In the following images, one can appreciate the different orientation of the major papilla during cannulation using the two duodenoscope types. With a reusable duodenoscope, biliary cannulation is achieved at a 60 to 80 degree angle. However, when using the single-use duodenoscope, given the relatively straight position of the scope, the bile duct is accessed at a 20 to 30 degree angle as the papilla is relatively on fast to the duodenoscope. Our next videos will demonstrate 
the use of single-use duodenoscopes to perform ERCP procedures of various complexity. An eight-year-old female with bile duct stones underwent an ERCP. Cannulation of the bile duct using a sphincter tome and a 0.025-inch glide wire was performed. During cannulation, the duodenoscope is relatively on fast to the major papilla, and please note the relatively straight position of the duodenoscope during cannulation. The cladogram revealed two bile duct stones. A biliary sphincterotomy was performed. Followed by dilation of the biliary orifice using a 12mm balloon. A 15mm stone retrieval balloon was then used to sweep the main bile duct with subsequent removal of common bile duct stones. Please note the relatively straight position of the duodenoscope during stone removal. A 45-year-old female was referred for sphincter of OD manometry for suspected sphincter of OD dysfunction. The bile duct was first cannulated using the manometry catheter. Bile was aspirated to confirm cannulation of the bile duct. The biliary sphincter basal pressure and biliary sphincter phasic pressures were elevated. The common bile duct was then cannulated using the sphincter tome. Please note the relative on fast position of the duodenoscope to the major papilla. and the relatively straight position of the duodenoscope during cannulation. A biliary sphincterotomy was performed. A 63-year-old female was referred for pancreatitism and recurrent acute pancreatitis. The minor papilla was identified in the second portion of the duodenum, with the duodenoscope in the long position. The dorsal pancreatic duct was cannulated using the tapered 543 cannula and a 0.018-inch Novogold guide wire. Once the dorsal pancreatic duct was cannulated, a pancreatogram was obtained, revealing a normal dorsal pancreatic duct. A 4 French 10 cm pancreatic stent was then placed. A 5 mm dorsal pancreatic sphincterotomy was then performed with a needle knife. A 64-year-old female underwent an ERCP for jaundice resulting from a hyla carcinoma. The bile duct was cannulated using a sphincter tome and a 0.025-inch guide wire. The cladogram was notable for a bismuth-4 hyla stricture. A biliary sphincterotomy was performed. A second guide wire was then inserted into the right intrahepatic ducts to allow bilateral stenting. The stricture was dilated using a 6mm dilating balloon. 
10 French 12 cm plastic biliary stents were inserted, one into the left intrahepatic duct and one into the right intrahepatic duct. A 48-year-old female with a hilus stricture underwent an ERCP for an indeterminate biliary stricture. The common bile duct was first cannulated using a sphincter toe and a 0.025 inch guide wire. Again, please note the on-fast position of the duodenoscope to the major papilla and the relatively straight position of the duodenoscope during cannulation. The cladogram revealed a stricture in the common hepatic duct. A biliary sphincterotomy was performed. The spikelar single operator cladoscope was then inserted into the main bile duct for direct visualization of the stricture. There was no resistance to the passage of the single operator cladoscope through the working channel of the single use duodenoscope. Within the common hepatic duct, irregular mass like lesion was visualized, which was biopsied under direct visualization using spy bite forceps. There was no resistance to the passage of the spy bite forceps when passing through the working channel of the single operator cladoscope, which is usually encountered as it exits the duodenoscope. We believe this is due to the straight position and rigidity of the duodenoscope, which allows easy passage of accessories through the working channel of single operator cladoscope. The final diagnosis was cladiocarcinoma. We believe that the development of single-use duodenoscope has significant implications for the future of ERCP. From a clinical perspective, this innovation eliminates the risk of duodenoscope-related infection transmission. It is possible that this may be the go-to technology when performing ERCP on immunocompromised or high-risk patients and carriers of multidrug resistant organisms. As shown in the case vignettes, the technology may have a niche role when performing certain procedures, such as single operator cladoscopy guided interventions. From a financial perspective, with approval from the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, it is expected that performance of ERCP using the single use duodenoscope will find acceptance by other insurance carriers. Also, we believe that the technology will find increased acceptance at centers, particularly those performing low-volume ERCPs that do not want to invest in capital equipment. The maximum advantage, however, will be from the innovation viewpoint. Given the nature of the manufacturing process, it is likely that design iterations can be made rapidly, thereby enabling development of duodenoscopes tailored to meet specific physician needs such as small handles for endoscopies with small hand sizes and variable stiffness scopes for procedures that may require more or less flexibility, as warranted by the clinical scenario. It is our opinion that the single-use duodenoscope is a major milestone, not only in the field of ERCP, but also in the field of flexible endoscopy.